uh, we've had policymakers, if you will, uh, international organizations, innovators, and now coming from a different perspective, uh, Patrick Nicolet, of course, with Capgemini, uh, the industry to see how the subject matter, which I'm sure is, is taking up a lot of thought and time, uh, immersing yourself and your colleagues. So, Patrick, take it away. Yeah, uh, Ali, absolutely. So, uh, uh, Capgemini is the largest IT services company in Europe, so I will present the practitioner view. Uh, but before that, I will uh, express an absolute personal conviction. Uh, as Holger highlighted it, uh, machine perform tasks. They never replace human beings. And there is unclarity in our taxonomy today when we debate about artificial intelligence and we're the age of the machine. A machine is a machine. And uh, when you look at uh, the component of the machines, and especially in artificial intelligence, it starts with algorithm, uh, at the heart of the artificial intelligence technology. And an algorithm is a mathematical answer to a clearly defined problem. Uh, the problem can be complex, some are not solved. The salesman uh, uh, trip is one good example, are not solved, and some are solved, sorting data. There are many algorithms to sort data. And then you have a lot of technologies around it, like speech recognition, natural language processes, semantic, biometrics, deep learning, swarm technologies, which is, uh, in my view, very funny, is how drones fly together. Uh, for instance, it's nice to see. Uh, chatbots, etc. So, But at the heart is the algorithm, which is a strength and a limitation. So what do we see now in terms of implementation in the, in the enterprise? So the first thing is something that started uh, with the first industrial revolution is touch and unmove. So the, the, what we had, the robot. And we started not by robot, by, by automation, because for economic reason, it's better to invest in a technology that does something simple in a repetitive manner, so you uh, depreciate your investment much faster. And then came more sophisticated robots, like painting cars uh, in assembly lines. Uh, this is complex, and these robots are much more uh, uh, expensive. And now we have developed capabilities so that they can interact and co-work with human beings. So they, they have tasks, everybody, so you divide the task. So this was the first sense, if you want, of human being, because all these development can, can be categorized along uh, human senses. So this is the first that we've seen for a while, and that is gaining pace. The, you, it is gaining pace, for instance, in IT, in information technology, because the first deployment of uh, artificial intelligence was called robot process automation, which is nothing else than doing automatically a script that another program is asking you to run, so uh, to make it simple. So the machine does what another machine asks you to do. But it's very simple. It's uh, very repetitive. The next era that is coming is around uh, listen and talking. This is the second sense that uh, artificial intelligence is going after. This is the most advanced in terms of technology development. And uh, when you discuss with uh, R&D from vendors, uh, such as uh, Microsoft, Google in that space, they believe that in five years from now, uh, uh, speech recognition, language capabilities from machines will be better than the human beings. We all do mistakes when we speak, uh, when we interpret, when we understand, and they believe in five years from now. It would be a huge uh, leap because today, when you ask, and you can try with your phone, you all have, I don't have my, my phone with me, but uh, if you all ask uh, Siri or whoever on Android, uh, the rate of response is 30%. Of course, if you ask what is the weather in Marrakech, you will have an answer. Uh, if you ask a more complex question, you won't have an answer. But you will have a polite answer, but not the answer you want. But, uh, that's a one thing, by the way, sociolo sociologically, is that virtual assistants are very polite. These create problems in human interactions afterwards. So, uh, but that's where, where we go. Uh, so that's the first area of development. So it touches in terms of activities, of course, everything related to call centers, help desk, which is an important part uh, of the activity. So the, the third one in development, but is more 10 years away from now, we see where, again, the, the, the timeline is defined by uh, when the technology will be better than human being, is watching and monitoring. So uh, you've seen a lot about face recognition, 
about what you can do. It will completely change elements related to cybersecurity. But today, the application we see in terms of uh, uh, what the eye, the vision can do, it's about self-healing. So you, you can detect default, be it on hardware, be it in systems, uh, through this technology, and then you can uh, anticipate and automatically launch, for instance, uh, the self-healing uh, of a system through this. Uh, there are big development, as you know, uh, in, uh, in cybersecurity, because this is a much more advanced uh, capability than what we have today, uh, notably when it comes to human being identification. And uh, there is a startup in, uh, in India called Fluid AI, where you can open a bank account uh, just on your, watching your screen. And through the recognition, you don't need to touch your PC anymore. You just talk, you move, the, 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 the machine recognizes you, and it's good enough to go. So this is the next uh, development. But again, it's uh, 10 years from now, but it will accelerate. The impact on the employment will be Limi more limited than uh, the, the first two. The first two, everything that is about moving, touching, and everything that is about listening, talking, will have bigger impact. Here, it opens new field. I'll come back on this. The next area is about knowledge. And uh, here, this is, um, my view, big revolution, uh, because we used to look as human being, and Google started like this, is we build knowledge repository. Libraries are knowledge repository. We build knowledge repository. Uh, and in fact, with AI, this is meaningless. You don't need to build a repository. You need to build the, the, the ability to ask the question and access the data wherever they are. We had the question yesterday about the fake news, too many data. There are many data that are structured and unstructured, and the structured ones are not structured the same everywhere. So you can consider that overall it's all unstructured. <laughs> and so you, you, you scroll through this, and the, there is a huge increase in data, and 80% of this is totally irrelevant but it is produced by the machines. So how do you build your knowledge? And I think I will come back on this. It has a profound implication on education. The next one is about analytics. So that's the next area of development. It is an, another of our human capabilities. <coughs> Here, we started with so-called business intelligence. Business intelligence is making, uh, trying to, understand some patterns from structured data, notably your accounting system is a, structured, uh, is a set of structured data. It's historical. Analytic is forward-looking, so you must understand trend and adapt to it. Uh, here we are making quite a, a lot of progress, and a lot of the human-to-machine uh, interaction is driven by analytic. The type of service you propose, the customization, etc. And this is primarily what is uh, changing the business model of almost all industries, this part. And then you have the, in analytics, uh, but probably we won't discuss it today, uh, it's machine learning. It's uh, where you can program a machine uh, to learn by itself uh, to execute at best a task. And the latest breakthrough, you probably all read through, is uh, AlphaGo Zero from DeepMind, a subsidiary of Google. It's a machine that could learn the game of Go without human interaction, because you train a robot. When you launch a robot, you program, you always have human beings that accompany the robot. That's the 30, 70% questions. Huh? So, so what do you do when you cannot answer the 70%? Someone is doing it. And then the machine is learning from the answers they get, and they progressively improve. AlphaGo Zero is really a breakthrough because uh, this machine started to learn the, the game of Go without human interaction, without human training. So that's, that's a new frontier. That's what we will see. So these are the areas where we see the, the application. I, in, in, in recent, uh, I, thanks to Thierry, I could join the World PC Conference on such session two times. So I talk about the impact for employment. I talk about the social impact. Uh, but I think the biggest one is uh, in, uh, in education. And uh, Marie alluded to, she concluded the presentation. I'm convinced, and it starts uh, from the very early age. The, the way we will have 
to look at the world compared to the way we were looking at it uh, is fundamentally different in, in the way you interact. The, the type of working organization will be completely distributed as well. So the hierarchical, the social model, all the institutions we have built are not geared to address uh, these elements. I'll stop here uh, because I, I, I see your look and I think it's about my time. I'll leave open but it's to a polite question. look. It's a very polite look. <laughs> no, very nice look. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes.